In some cases, typically used material models for metals, such as homogeneous isotropic linear elastic or bilinear elastic plastic characteristics, do not satisfy the material behavior of plastic parts. Rubber materials, for instance, need to be represented by hyperelastic materials. Generally, they show significant higher strains than metals. A buffer device will be used to show the application of the curve fitting method in order to use material testing data. Furthermore, a nonlinear analysis considering large deformation is run. ANSYS Workbench provides the technical framework for efficient modeling and solving techniques. This means that, among others, hexahedron meshing, a reduced model size due to symmetry properties, and auto time stepping are used. Let's start with the geometry of the buffer device. It consists of a sleeve and a shaft, both made of steel. In between, two elastomers are installed in order to absorb impact energy. The elastomeric parts are sliced in a way that a subsequent sweep mesh of hexahedrons is enabled. Since there are several symmetry planes with respect to the geometry and the loading condition, it is allowed to consider only one-eighth of the whole buffer geometry. Then, a structural mechanical block is dragged onto the geometry. Entering the engineering data allows the user to define a new material. The basis should be the strain stress data of an uniaxial tension test. The next step would be choosing an appropriate material model to use the curve fit function. Now, the question is, when do I use which material model? Let's have a brief look onto the available hyperelastic material models. There are, on the one hand, two classes of material models, the phenomenological models and the micromechanic models. On the other hand, we distinguish between nearly or fully incompressible and compressible models. We see that there are various models implemented in ANSYS Workbench. When regarding nearly or fully incompressible material models, the main criterion of selection is the expected strain range. Some of them are valid up to strains of 30, 200, 300 or 700 percent. In this case we choose the 5-parameter Mooney-Rivlin model. We solve the curve fit and copy the calculated values to the material properties. we can see that the curve fit correlates perfectly to the experimental data. Then we enter the mechanical simulation. Next steps are material assignment, Definition of nonlinear contacts between shaft, sleeve and buffer rings.
Meshing Options Boundary and Loading Conditions The latter ones consist of a frictionless support representing the symmetry plane and static pressure. Since we expect large deformations, this option should be activated. This means that equilibrium iterations are calculated with respect to the deformed shape. We make sure that the outer time stepping is active, which means that the increase of the load increment from substep to substep is chosen by an implemented algorithm. During and after solving, we can check the convergence monitor. It shows that not every increase of the load increment achieved a convergent solution, so that the load increment was adjusted. Typical post-processing objects are the total deformation and, for instance, the equivalent elastic strain. The total deformation reaches 10.4 mm, whereas the equivalent elastic strain reaches a value of 24%. To summarize, ANSYS Workbench provides various hyperelastic material models. Combined with convenient pre- and post-processing and also efficient solver technology, assemblies including hyperelastic materials are analyzed expeditiously. Now it's up to you to benefit from the ANSYS Workbench implemented hyperelastic material models and to gain more knowledge of your part or assembly.